You can grow taller at any age. But how? It's because your bones can change. You don't believe me? Look at this arm wrestler Devin Larratt's arm length difference. This arm is longer. You see that? I do what see that. What do you that. notice? The arm he trains is longer than the other. This is definitely not a coincidence. Except it sadly is a complete coincidence because 40% of people have an arm significantly longer than their other arm. Me, I, I have this as well. This arm is a centimeter longer than this arm. Did I ever train it? Was it always this way? Yes, it was always that way. I never trained it. So there was a 40% chance, no matter what he did, he was gonna have an arm longer than the other arm. It's a complete coincidence. And these people find this example and they try to push Wolf's Law for height with it. Now take a look at the Maasai tribe from Kenya. The Maasai tribe has some of the tallest people in the world. You might True. know this tribe due to their traditional exercise of jumping insane heights. No. The Maasai tribe. This isn't why we know the tribe. We know bec them because they drink blood and they drink raw milk and they eat meat. That's why they're tall. That's why we know them. Tribe's average height is six foot three. The difference in length in the arms of Devon Larat and the heights of the Maasai tribe is due to a scientific reason. Wolf's law. Wolf's law. <laughs> this law is the wow. reason. Th this is shameless. Bodybuilders have higher bone density, which occurs due to the repeated weightlifting habit. In 1892, German surgeon Julius Wolf stated that bone in a healthy animal will adapt to the loads under which it is placed. So that means if you lift really heavy weights, your bones would become more dense to aid this stress. Our Super important details here, guys. Density. Your bones will become more dense. This is true. Wolf's Law is a real thing. If you break your bone, it's going to heal back stronger, right? Because, oh, you know, your body is very intelligent. Like maybe we're using this bone for really hard activities. We need it to be very strong. Never does Wolf's Law say you will get a longer bone ever. Like let's look up the definition right now. <clears throat> Wolf's Law describes how bone and healthy animal adapts to the loads. Essentially, bones become stronger and denser in response to increased stress. And conversely, they weaken when stress is reduced, which is why you see, you know, a patient in their bed all day, they have weaker bone density because they're not using their bones at all. Nowhere in Wolf's Law does it speak about getting a longer bone from stress. Height growth occurs due to stress or stimuli. This can be two types of stress, hormonal stress and mechanical stress. This video is completely about mechanical stress and how we can use it to grow taller. Devin Larratt's arm length difference. I'll tell you guys how to actually grow. By the way, you grow through nutrition and hormones, not stress. You can leave stress out of the picture. Stress is associated, not, well, it's directly linked to stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Those do, are not conducive to having high testosterone. You don't want stress of any sort in development. ...is due to the repeated training of only the longer arm. But how no, do we no apply proof. this to grow taller? Microfractures. Can't. When we apply the right stimuli to our legs, they will grow vertically and longer. But how to do this? Your bones remodel themselves to help the stress you apply. Yeah, we've heard you so five times. If you apply certain stress where your legs need to stretch, they will grow. This is where cycling comes into play. Look oh at the God. Netherlands. It has some of the tallest people. And also cycling is extremely common here. So, how so what they just said there was an association, right? These people are tall and they cycle a lot. You know what's really interesting? Uh, this is hilarious. I'd love to debate this guy. I would destroy him. So when we're looking at associations, you have one tribe, the Maasai, they do Maasai jumps, they're tall. You have the Netherlands, they cycle, they're tall. You know what's interesting? The Netherlands is number one in dairy consumption in the world. So that's a huge association. They're number one in dairy. Then you see the Maasai tribe, they drink a lot of raw dairy, blood and animal foods. So if we're gonna use associations, wouldn't it make more sense to look at what both the tall people are doing and find the commonality. Because the Maasai don't cycle, the Netherlands don't Maasai jump, right? Unless he's trying to say those will have the same effect. Either way, look at the dairy consumption to height association, okay? 17 of the top 20 tallest countries are also in the top 20 for dairy consumption. That is a huge, really strong association. These associations, nothing. How do we use this to grow taller? When we repeatedly cycle by stretching our legs, our bones get signaled to remodel itself to help cycle easier by lengthening the leg. 
This is similar to why giraffes have insanely long necks and limbs. No, it's don't go because there. Because they eat leaves which are at the top of the oh tree. Oh my fucking Over god. Over time, they get accustomed to this and their bones get remodeled to help the habit, thus growing their necks and limbs. Bro. This is Wolf's law which supports evolution. It This this better have 78,000 likes, 1,000 dislikes. I guess people people are kind of dumb. Like let's be honest, most people are pretty stupid and then they hear a way to grow taller after puberty and then the, it's just it's like dopamine to their brain and they want to just believe it like bro again wolf's law nothing to do with the length of your femur or something it's about the density by the way giraffes have taller necks because of wolf's law what they have taller necks because the giraffes that had longer necks will be more likely to reproduce because they would be getting the proper nutrition and the, the giraffes with the short necks wouldn't be able to get as much leaves or any leaves and they die. That's evolution. It's an evolutionary pressure. There's not a, a giraffe that's an adult and it starts stretching to get some leaves and now its neck is getting longer. What is, what am I watching? But how to cycle optimally for height growth? It's simple. Don't cycle really. at all. Start by increasing the seat height so that at the bottom of the pedal, your legs are straight and stretched, not bent. Okay. Now cycle every day using this height. After a week, increase the seat height by a quarter inch so that your bones have a reason to get longer. Do this mm. consistently and you'll see changes in three to four months. A study was conducted regarding the increase in saddle heights in bicycles over time. This study showed that extension of saddle height leads to the extension of joints, mainly the hip, knee, and ankle. Extension. Another thing noticed was the muscles get stretched during cycling. When muscles get stretched, they usually revert to their original position. However, if tension is applied for a longer time, the muscles become longer to get used to the stretch position and adapt to this new position, which is known as the adaptive remodeling of the muscles. Cycling consistently can increase your height by lengthening the femur and the shin. Another Again, Wolf's Law only reports on density, not length. Way. The most effective one is using microfractures. When bones get microfractured and damaged, they grow back bigger and stronger. This is the reason the Maasai tribe is very bigger and stronger. It, all it really takes to debunk this video, I really could have just quoted, I, I really could have just put the definition of Wolf's Law on the screen for the whole video and would just counter every point. Oh, the repeated vertical jumps microfracture the shin which then grows back bigger and thus longer. I wish the Maasai didn't have that traditional practice of jumping so then that they would be the same height if not taller and then no one would be able to like abuse this tribe for their propaganda. But however, only jumping will not give you the best results. You have to combine it with stretching the bone. Wow, that's so dramatic, Let bro. Let me explain. Imagine your bones are microfractured and need to grow, but you're standing. Your body applies force on the shin downwards due to gravity. This causes the bone to grow wider and not longer. But how do we achieve vertical? Oh wow, you just debunked your own video. Did you guys catch that? But you're standing. Your body applies force on the shin downwards due to gravity. Okay, so if standing is applying force downwards, which is gonna widen the bone, what are the Maasai doing? They're jumping up and down. That should be widening their bones then. Ah, you just debunked your own video. Wow, that's hilarious, right? Like we're looking at the Maasai, right? They're jumping up and down. They're applying the force down, just like this guy. So according to him, you know, 30 seconds after showing the Maasai jumping, now he's saying that should make them grow wider. Well, good job, bro. This causes the bone to grow wider and not longer. Oh. <laughs> but how do we achieve vertical growth? By stretching the bones after microfracturing it. To do this, do Maasai jumps for 15 minutes with breaks, a few minutes before sleeping. Now, after you've done the exercise and created micro fractures in the bone, attach ankle weights to leg and hang them off the bed while lying. Attach ankle weights to leg. Now, here, here's the thing. Do the Maasai do this? Do the Maasai do the jumping and then they do they go back to their, um, their, their hut and they attach their ankle weights that they have and then they, uh, for an hour, it's like, dude, your whole video just fell apart when you said that standing upright is not the right pressure on your bones and that it will be more wide because the Maasai do their Maasai jumps and that's all they do. So by your own definitions, your own logic, 
they're not doing the ankle weights, right? The Maasai that are the ones that are 6'3 aren't doing that. They're doing their Maasai jumps traditionally every once in a while. And every single day they're drinking milk, drinking blood and eating meat. That's what they're doing. That is the essential nutrition. And that's what's conducive to your hormones to grow tall. Down. This stretches the bone causing vertical growth. Use the ankle weights for around one hour and then directly just go like to the sleep. Maasai, man. Just like the if Maasai. If you stand, the bones will get compressed, resulting in no vertical growth. Mm. If you do this combined with cycling, you can easily gain again massage jumping, jumping up and down. Wouldn't that compress your bones, according to this guy? Three <clears> to four <throat> inches. Easily. Whoa. If you do this combined with cycling, you can easily gain three to four inches. Easily. easily. Three inches. inches. As Four this inches. is growing the bone, which doesn't require the growth plates to be open. Exercise can also well, help improve height growth. Maasai jumps is not only good for creating micro fractures, but also improving cytokines, which help you grow taller. Implementing sprints three to four times a week is very good for your height gains and health. Sprinting increases growth hormone, testosterone, and IGF-1. I do recommend you guys go check out my video where it's a kind of boring video, but I break down a document, a few studies um, going over these actual measurements because in these communities, you hear everyone say more growth hormone, more testosterone, more IGF-1. The truth is testosterone is actually lowered two hours after sprinting, after the testosterone spikes to be used to recover. Your actual net testosterone is lowered after sprinting, your IGF-1 completely unchanged, and then your growth hormone is elevated for 90 minutes after sprinting then it goes down below from what it was so what the evidence suggests about sprinting if you want to grow taller is that you will get a minor temporary boost in these in in growth hormone and testosterone but overall it will be lower and it's only used for recovery not for bone so this is completely wrong one do five sets of sprints of 20 seconds each and make sure to speed up towards the end lifting weights can also be very good for you do deadlifts and squats, which improves your hormones and also gives you good posture. A hack to increase height directly is a lot of... So to be clear, exercise, he's not wrong. Exercise will affect your hormones. Like testosterone will be released, okay? But in terms of building more testosterone, it's not coming from nowhere. You can't just move your body and your net benefit testosterone levels go up. That comes from nutrition. That comes from lifestyle, sun, etc. A hack to increase height directly is a lot of sunlight exposure. The okay, reason wow. the Maasai tribe are so tall is because they get sunlight exposure all the time. It only took them all the BS at the beginning to get to this. Of course, sun, super important. Time, coupled with a lot of red meat and raw dairy. Oh, there you are. So you understand they're raw, they have raw dairy consumption, just like the Netherlands. Netherlands have more pasteurized, still raw though. And that's why they're tall. Absolutely, man. And of course... Since they've been generationally consuming blood, he didn't put in blood. Oh, it's too scary to mention to people. Oh, we can't say blood. Yes, they drink blood, bro. Drinking blood is healthy. Oh, you're a cannibal. No, shut the fuck up, bro. It's a natural food. The Inuit do it. The Maasai do it. Stop being a pussy. Go drink some blood if you can get some. Point is, he didn't mention these things earlier. I guess he just threw them in as a little thing. That is 99% of their height because those foods also make the genetics. When an animal, which we're an animal, eats something for 100,000 years during the Ice Age, you know, out of the last 110,000 years, 90% of that, we were eating only meat. That shapes your genetics. That shapes what food you should be eating. And so their genetics are also very tall now because of what they were eating and their climate. Then they pair the nutrition on top. That's why they're 6'3". Supplementing on boron can be extremely beneficial. Boron is a trace mineral found in foods like prunes and black raisins which directly increases height growth. Boron also increases the absorption of calcium and magnesium and directly improves bone health, which is vital as we are growing our bones longer. Take six milligrams of boron every day for a month, then take three. He zoomed in on a very small piece of the puzzle and then it's like kind of overhyping it. But I mean, boron, it matters, of course. Three milligrams every day. Boron directly increases free testosterone and DHT optimizing your dht not only increases your height but also improves facial structure by making you more dimorphic increasing muscular sure. growth getting a deeper voice In however if you sure. are looking for results by applying mechanical stress it is necessary to get good recovery and manage your hormones for recovery you will need to consume only clean sources of food 
completely eliminate polyunsaturated fats like seed oils. Only okay. consume coconut oil, grass fed. Avoid seed oils, and then he shows coconut oil, which is a seed oil. Of course, it's not as bad as other seed oils, but why would you ever choose the saturated fat of a coconut over butter or tallow? Makes no sense. It has no nutrition. Butter, olive oil, and tallow. Avoid polyunsaturated fatty acids, yet eat olive oil, even though olive oil is 15% linoleic acid, which is the most common, you know, the, the seed oil PUFA, which gets stored in your tissues, your adipose tissues. So he just said, avoid linoleic acid, avoid polyunsaturated fatty acids, yet eat something with way too much linoleic acid, such as olive oil. Also, it oxidizes at very low temperatures. If you want to grow taller, you have to optimize your hormones and be lean. You cannot grow tall if you aren't shredded, because having more fat increases aromatase, which converts... Yeah, 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 we know. Yeah, you don't want to have, you know... Here's the thing, shredded is a little misleading. I wouldn't recommend you be shredded in puberty, but, um, you know, 15, 16% body fat... It's a good, good uh, middle ground. I wouldn't go anything under 12% puberty. Then you're not going to have enough fat to, for optimal hormones. Fat is really important for hormones. Too much fat, estrogenic. Completely agreed with that, though. Testosterone into estrogen. Estrogen closes your growth plates and is also bad for testosterone levels. We know True. how to increase length in our legs. But what about our upper body? Because we cannot apply any mechanical stress to our spines... We cannot stimulate it physically to grow taller, but however, we can optimize hormones like dihydrotestosterone, testosterone, and IGF-1. Watch my previous video on hormone optimization if you Might want to grow to. taller efficiently. If you want to maximize the height in your spine from the hormonal stress, you need to hormonal have good stress. posture. Take a look at this interesting phenomenon. When astronauts go above the atmosphere oh with God. no gravity, their height increases by two to three inches. This is due to the decompression of the spine. Between each vertebrae, we have a soft membrane which gets compressed from gravity, exerting force on it. So fixing your posture is very important. Not only back posture, even neck posture, so you can breathe optimally. You also need to get a lot of sleep as growth occurs only in rest. That's it for the video, guys. Watch. Did you just compare no having no gravity to posture i have no words so i mean overall it's a, a bad video definitely a bad video it's gonna overall i think harm people you know maybe if you if you know what you're doing you only listen to certain pieces of advice like the sunlight and the diet sure but 99 percent of this video was about wolf's law being used incorrectly wolf's law doesn't report on bone length only density by definition when your growth plates are closed you're done now, your growth plates can be open until 21, even 22. There's recorded cases of that. You can use an aromatase inhibitor during puberty. You can stay lean. You can have the proper diet. There's many, many protocols to maximize your height that actually work. And that leads me to a shameless promo. If you want, just throwing this option out here. I have a height and development course inside my school community, along with many other guides to looks max and health max if you want. And again, I followed around 90% of this height course to get to six foot five and a half. Like I actually did these things and I'm six foot five and a half. So if you really want to naturally max out your height, I would check out the school community link down below. Okay. And if you're interested in, you know, diet and things like that, a lot of really good information in here, a lot of coursework, you know, other things like, you know, how to rate faces. Uh, this just came out as, you know, how to assess everything. If you're interested, uh, we'll look at one thing, for example, uh, this is the ideal ratio if you guys want to go measure your face shape you guys probably already knew this one but um yeah also has my chart all this stuff so yep if you uh basically actually want to grow taller naturally through in puberty if your plates are closed you're done if you're in puberty i would recommend checking out the school community it's 19 dollars right now for the next few days you can get the height course the second you join so yeah check it out if you want thank you guys for watching peace